Thank you for tuning in to Stampscaping 101. This is a stamp along video working with the nature sheet number seven, the country chapel. Doing this type of composition right here, here, here. Okay. But in just a cool color scheme, we have uh, the winter months ahead, right around the corner, really. And I thought I'd do kind of a winter card, Christmas card, or whatever. And this one's an easy color scheme. You can't get more an easier color scheme than winter. Now, there's all kinds of different winters you can do, and it doesn't have to be kind of this blue, cold, you know, chilly type of scene. But it's a quick and easy one, so, and it's really fun, okay? Uh, you don't have to think about other kinds of colors and, you know, other colors to introduce to various different uh, elements within the scene. Like, oh, I want to do a, a brown chapel or something like that. Although you certainly could, but you don't have to in these uh, kind of moonlit nighttime uh, color schemes like this. But um, quickly composed, what do we have? One, two three, four elements in there, you know, and they're all, they all come in this pack right here. And the one of the little twists that I did, as I do in these um, kind of nighttime, wintry, cold, you know, whatever, midnight compositions, sometimes I'll stamp my foreground in white in addition to black. Sometimes, I don't know, sometimes I might just keep it in white. But uh, it gives the foreground a little bit of depth and visual interest by doing that. All right. White gel pen is really fun to do to kind of add this kind of overlay of snowfall over the top of the scene in the end. And in this case, I used a little bit of pigment ink over the, one of those little dots up there, and that would represent, I don't know, to me it's representing kind of like a North Star or something like that. Um, in a scene such as this one. All right. So anyways, I hope you uh, stamp along with me. If you have that country chapel, or if you have some kind of structure or cabin, you can substitute that. Uh, if you don't have a path, you can just fill that whole area in there with like a snow texture or the sedge filler stamp. <clears throat> and in that mountain in the background, you can stamp anything you want. You can stamp more sedge filler up there if you don't have that mountain. The mountain's kind of fun, though, and kind of adding that little bit of texture on there. But you don't have to have it on there. Like, I don't have it on these two scenes right here. Or the, actually, these four right here. So, substitute, if need be. One of the things to watch out for when you start off this video, and I'm kind of remind you throughout it, but uh, remember to retain some areas of light, okay, in your different areas. If you're doing this scene right here, kind of keep your path a little bit lighter. Part of the chapel, okay, I did hit some shadows over this way, so it's not like a stark white. And just some of your mountain could be this area. The mountain could be this area, you know. Just kind of wherever your initial color kind of uh, starts to define your lighting scheme within the scene, okay? But just remember when you get into those darker tones, don't bring those darker tones into here like black and dark blue, okay? And then, by not doing that, you will have defined a really simple and effective lighting scheme in your scene. All right? Hope you have fun. Or, if you're just watching the video, hope you enjoy it. Thanks for tuning in. Okay, we are going to stamp a stamp along scene. Figured it was time to do one of those again. Featuring some images out of the Country Chapel set, which is nature sheet number seven. It's focused around the Country Chapel, some trees, rocky peaks in the background, it has a crooked path in here, but it also has sedge filler, which is <coughs> gra grassy texture, and the reeds. A really good kind of foundational pack for some very universal images. You can use those mountains in the background of many different compositions. The trees could go with practically anything, maybe not a tropical series or something like that, or 
like, you know, Southern California deserts, you know, but any type of uh, uh, forest or uh, just a general area where you would see some pines. This one has a little bit of a uh, deciduous tree in there as well, but it goes with pretty much anything. Reeds, of course, if you've watched these videos before, um, that's one of my favorite foreground images. Um, use it all the time. But anyways, I thought we would go with this pack here, and we will focus it around the main image, which is the country chapel. I wanted to do a stamp along video, and I wanted to do something um, just very basic because I want to do a test here. I've been doing a lot of these kind of black and white, kind of reverse image types of scenes uh, lately. Or, you know, if they're not really a scene, it's a card. And I wanted to see if I could bring some of that kind of that spirit into my other, you know, types of uh, scenes that I already do. Things like the glossy paper technique with a lot of dye-based inks. This is good. We're going to make this into a nighttime scene, okay? We're going to keep it really simple. All right. Now, where I've placed this is just a little bit, the base of it is just a little bit past, or under, about a third of this quarter page, four and a quarter by five and a half inch cardstock, okay? I placed it a little bit out to the side because that's where the front of the chapel is, okay? All right, now I am actually going to clean my stamps off this time because I don't know how much I'll be doing this, but I'm kind of getting tired of cleaning, you know, like 50 stamps all at the same time from having uh, all of my stamps kind of piled up, you know, after I uh, use them in a, a bunch of scenes, so... Uh, and if this, is if this is a stamp along, uh, well, I know a lot of you like to clean your stamps off right away, so I will do the same. Of course, with videos, you can always pause it, you know, if I'm, if I'm not stopping. Okay, this is a Crooked Path now. See, this is the end of the Crooked Path right there. So I just, you know, I'm going to put my finger, see, on that area. And I am going to position this, hopefully, leading up to that area of the chapel as best I can. Okay, see it's right there. And I'm overlapping the stairs of the chapel a little bit. I'm not worried about overlapping because that's what this whole series is really about, okay? I can see where it overlaps in there, but not it's not really a big deal, okay? I don't have to... Um, use these stamps like they are, um, like you're putting together a jigsaw puzzle or something like that. You want overlapping to occur so that um, everything's, everything blends together in a nice, seamless fashion. By the way, this is the cling foam set here, so I'm not using the tack and peel side of my acrylic blocks. We have this area out to the side. I'm thinking it'll be about two impressions with the sedge filler, okay? Now this one I'm overlapping into the crooked path, probably about an inch or so, okay? And I'm coming up into those trees as well. You know, we don't want to come up here, you know, and stamp right into the chapel, but you can be very, very, you know, uh, I don't know, not, the word's not haphazard or anything like that, but I overlapped well into those trees. I overlapped well into this crooked path down here. And over here, three impressions. I like to um, re-ink usually in between my impressions. Now, see, I don't have to mask off my chapel because um, I put those trees around it for that reason, so you don't have to mask. Okay, you can just stamp right over those trees with your surrounding imagery. Okay. Some people, it bothers people. Not, I mean, it doesn't really bother them, that's not the word, but they think, oh my gosh, you make it look so easy. If you make the process easy, 
it will be easy. But I know how people will make, not, you know, people that do this or if you've, you know, done it before, but um, some people just, it's too, <laughs> it drives them nuts to uh, think about overlapping things, you know, and not being really careful uh, with positioners and masks and things like that, which is an excellent technique for certain types of imagery, but tonal ones that are be meant to be uh, merged together, you want overlapping on everything like that. Now on this one right here, if I'm going to stamp something over that little steeple right there, now this mountain, this rocky peaks, can stamp into it and not look very good because it'll, you know, see it right in that steeple, right? I'm not worried about those trees at all because they're solid black. So I'm going to see about that steeple will go up about halfway up this mountain, okay? I was doing this in the uh, live uh, uh, YouTube uh, stream this, uh, this past weekend, but see, I'm wiping off the bottom of this. Rocky Peaks. Actually, I'm not sure if it was the Rocky Peaks or if it was the Pine. Maybe it was the Pine Road that I did this with, okay? So I'm wiping off a really good amount of it down here. See that? And then as I move up, I'm taking off a little bit less ink. So what we have here is a transition between dry and wet. See, I'm not going over the top of it, okay? But I don't want to just go like that across there, otherwise it's too definitive a streak. So you kind of take off a little bit more down here. You use a little bit pre less pressure up here, okay? And then none up here, so it's dry. A little bit moister to wet, okay? Now, that doesn't take a lot of practice. There's not like, oh my gosh, I, you know, I, did, I took off too much or I took off too little. It's, yeah, you know, it's not really like that, okay? But you do want to take off a pretty decent amount at the base, especially if you don't feel like masking, which I don't. You know, this is stamp along. It's not, you know, uh, I don't know, TDM 101 or something like that. Okay, but see that? How it's gray down there? And it's dark up there, right? But that, you know, that lightness down there actually looks pretty good because it's going across those trees right there. It looks like it's more distant because it's lighter. And then not having a super definitive really dark mountain at the base doesn't obscure the nice silhouettes of these trees right here. And plus it looks like, I don't know, like some clouds are at the base of this mountain in the background, right? Because it's lighter, okay? It gives the mountains a little bit more of a height, so that's just a really simple little trick. Dry, a little bit less moist, and then just moist up there. So it's this transition in there. So you can have a nice little effect with very little effort. Okay, and that's all, that's really, I love that, you know. I like getting some nice effects in as simple a way as possible. Now, some, you know, that's not for everything. It doesn't mean I just want everything simple, but if it's to get a certain look, you know, I'm not going to turn a, like an easy process into a harder one if I can help it. Okay, so we have a nice composition right there. And let's see, let's take some inks. I'll grab some light blues right here. Okay, this is Memento. We have our um, Salvia Blue. This is Summer Sky Memento. I don't know, here's a London Fog, Grey, Bahama Blue, Danube Blue. If you have Marvy pads now, a lot of people bought a lot of those uh, Marvy pads off the uh, those eBay auctions. These two are the same right here. There's a light blue and a blue, the number three, okay? So something like that. We can stick to kind of this color scheme. We can use a gray in there. Let's, why don't we try that? Okay. All right. 
when I look at this, what is my lighting scheme going to be? All right. I think it would make sense to not take this chapel and just darken it out too much, right? It's the subject of our scene. It's the star of the scene. I like this path to be remain nice and light, like it's capturing the light, reflecting the light. But in reality, maybe it wouldn't look like that. But it's one of those things that I call a lead-in, okay? It leads the viewer's eye in, so if we darken it all out, it's not going to be this inviting little path. So I'm thinking this path right here will be kind of light. The chapel will be kind of light. And maybe some of those peaks up there are a little bit lighter. A couple areas down here maybe in a little bit of shadow. But it's going to be kind of an oscillation of light and dark. It's not really critical about things that you leave light and which you don't. But... In regards to some of the main things that you want your viewer, you know, to, you want to direct your viewer's eye to, okay? Now there's a little bit of blue in here or something like that, so it's a little bit more of a bluish gray than it, than the color really is, but hey, you know. Uh, so what? <laughs> It's going to be colorful anyway. Okay, but let's direct our viewer's um, eye to the subject matter, the main subject matter. All right. I like a little bit of tone. I don't now. I don't want this path, you know, to be just stark white. Okay, I'm, but I'll probably avoid it with some of my mid tones to darker tones. Okay. So you see how I'm kind of keeping this a little bit lighter right here. Chapel's a little bit lighter. And the chapel itself is a little bit darker um, on the design. So I like to follow suit with some additional tone, especially with one of my lighter colors that I'm going to be working with. Okay, so you see that kind of doesn't look like it's in. Oh, are you going to focus for me? Good. Okay, see that? This whole area right here is kind of toned. You know, I put some gray over that, a little bit of gray in here. So see, there's kind of an oscillation of lights and darks in here. Now, this isn't a real dark color, though, okay, that I'm working with. It's it's pretty light gray, you know, besides that other color that's in there. I think there's blue or something, but anyway. Now, see up here in the meadow, in the background, you know, I can leave a little bit of it light. A little bit of it darker. I don't know if you can even see that difference right there. Same thing in the mountains. Maybe you have a little bit of that tone up in the mountains, okay? Like some of the peaks. Now remember this one's going to, going to be kind of a, a uh, kind of a nighttime scene, so I'll put some of this tone into my sky. Okay, I'm good. I'm getting more into the uh, just the pure gray now. You know, these tips are like sponges, so there was a little bit of blue kind of packed away in there. That's why you kind of see those little bluish tinges in there, but that's not something that I worry about at all because I have all these other blue tones to come, so I don't know if I'd want it like, you know, orange or something like that, you know, but um, another blue amongst all the blue that's going to go in here, no big deal. Okay, so see what I'm doing here? So as a stamp along process, I just want you to leave some areas light. Okay, I could have left that area light, but instead I left that little area light. A little bit of light down here, a little bit of light here, okay? Now, when you move forward, okay, try and be careful to retain the areas of light, the little spots of light, wherever you still have them, okay? Just uh, try to retain those. Try not to go over them with your colors to come, okay? Your values to come. All right, now I'm just adding a little bit more of this um, gray, or whatever first color you're working with. Just keep it kind of light in terms of tone. If you didn't have gray, you'd also go with just something like a summer sky, all right? Go with your lightest colors right now. Mementos, if you have... Um, Oh, I don't know, like a blue distress or something like that. That would be excellent as well. OK, 
Okay. Now this is summer sky. It's it's barely showing. Okay, but it wouldn't really hurt to to use it. Okay. See, I'm avoiding these two areas right here. If you need to, you can even put your finger down like this just to, as a reminder, because when this process gets going, sometimes it's easy just to go over the whole thing really fast, okay? All right, but I mean, look at this. This is, we, we have a pretty good lighting scheme working in here, and this is just with a couple of really light colors right now, okay? So, as far as the stamp along, you're almost there, believe it or not, with this, okay? This is the Bahama Blue. It's quite a bit, you know, darker in terms of value than those first two colors. So again, retain those light areas in there, wherever you have them. Stay on the outside. Now here's what you're going to do is in terms of a blending process. You're going to stay on the outside t areas of the card a little bit more before you take them in here again, okay? Because it's darker to begin with, okay? So you want to stay on the edge a little bit longer, okay? Because, let me see this, working it right here, blending it in, retaining that light, okay? So when you start with a darker color, there's still a decent amount of color left in your pad because it's darker to begin with, okay? A few tappings with the lightest of tone, and you're looking, you know, really, really light. So even if you you know squeezed out a bunch of it, it's a lighter kind of color to begin with. So it's not really going to show up too much. But you don't want to do it with your darker tones like this one. Okay, bring some of that blue. I'm putting a little bit on this road just so, just for a little change of hue. But it's still pretty light in comparison, in contrast with the uh, things around it, okay? Okay, now I'm hitting the shadows a little bit more because it's darker on the image itself, so I'm kind of reiterating that with a little bit of tone and value, like right in here, okay? Little area of shadow right there makes that seem lighter by contrast, okay? All right, now when you start moving up into your darker tones like this Danube Blue or the Marvy number three blue, test it out, see what you're going to be working with. It's not exactly going to be exactly that color that you're working with because Paper is getting a little bit more moist, okay? It is a glossy cardstock, so... Um, the colors aren't underneath are going to be showing through, and this doesn't apply so fast, okay? Because it started, paper's, the paper's starting to get a little bit saturated on the surface, especially when you keep going on with these thicker styles of ink, such as Memento or Distress or something like that, those ones. Which is nice, because it's easy to blend in like that. Even if I do that horrible mark, it just blends in beautifully because the paper is a little bit moist, okay? And it gives you time to blend that out, okay? But again, be careful not to tone out everything. It doesn't mean you can't bring any of this current color into some of those lighter areas, okay? But I just wouldn't do it with a, don't do it too fast kind of drag it in um, slowly and kind of methodically, all right? Okay, but see, I'll show you what having a nice coating of that ink does, okay? See this right here? Squeezing it out, okay? I'll have that shape right there, right? It just blends right in there, okay? Now, I know a lot of people are saying, well, their paper's not doing that, okay, what they see on this scene. But the thing that I did was I put down a lot of these two first colors, okay? So it builds up kind of a coating at the base of the paper so that if you are a little bit, you know, haphazard with your darker colors, it won't leave this obtrusive, unintentional, and 
undesired mark, okay? You can just blend it right out. So that's my secret thing to all of it. Um, it's not a secret that I'm keeping it, you know, away from all of you, but uh, it's the thing that I do in terms of a process that makes the process. I hesitate to say foolproof, you know, in terms of not being, Ill, you know, not making these uh, unintentional marks, but it, it's, you know, it's right in there as far as um, usage goes. These inks can really blend really well for you if you use this kind of process, okay? So remember, one of the things that I always watch for in my workshops, and I, I mention it in here, is you don't want to work like this, you know? Even though you see it's kind of dark on that whole edge, you don't want to work like this, okay? Because that looks like this, sometimes on the paper. So you want to just kind of work one a little area like this, okay? Work in, think about it in terms of like quadrants or something like that, maybe four quadrants to a, you know, a small scene like this or card size scene, okay? See, I'm working that whole side and it gets, you know, I get that nice transition in there. If you're someone that bought any Marvy pads and you have a little bit of a collection, you can move into the Marvy pads, which are a thinner ink, okay? Now I'm using the same tool here, so the same tip, so there's a lot of the uh, previous ink in here, so it's not quite so thin of an ink when I put the Marvy ink in here because it's saturated with some of the other colors, the other brands of inks, which are thicker inks, okay? But the Marvy ink being a thinner variety, viscosity, whatever, of ink, gets a little bit more saturated. Do you see how much darker that top is than some areas around around in here? Okay. It's not a huge value, you know, because this color of Marvy is almost the same color as that Danube blue, or value of Danube blue, okay. But it is, it does appear a little bit darker because it is saturating the page faster and absorbing into the paper. Okay. Looks like a nice winter scene, I think. Now, if you want to, you can tip your edges. You can go into the edges with a little bit of black, okay? Just go for a little bit of a corner. Don't, you know, bring it in too far. I'm barely getting anything because my paper is so wet and saturated with ink. So this black is just barely showing, but I do kind of like it in terms of a slight vignette including the black, okay, hit it down here in my shadows, deepen my shadows a little bit, okay, down here in the corner, let's see, we're looking at about 24 minutes so far on this card, I don't have to go with the black, you don't have to put as much of that dark blue on there, you know, I'm just kind of taking it all the way. Okay. And there you have your full lighting scheme. Now see what I mean about keeping some areas kind of light up there? I think that gives that those rocky peaks a little bit more dimension that way. You know, that one peak could be more forward than the back one. See, I think I like that better than if that peak was just all colored in blue. All right now, see how this leads right into the chapel right there? A little bit of color on here, otherwise it'd be too stark white. And a little bit of light down here, like some light is coming down from the heavens or something like that and hitting, you know, that little patch 
in front of the chapel. All right, now let's have some fun here with... Uh, let's just go with a white gel pen. Let's keep it simple, okay? Now, I didn't make this a winter wonderland, but sometimes what I think is, uh, in some scenes, rather than just have everything white, which has its own dramatic presence, but as far as a textural statement, it's, you know, snow has some of the least texture, but where you run into some texture sometimes is where it falls on certain objects and areas, okay? So let's look, let's see if we can zoom in here a little bit. Okay. And. This is a Uniball Signo 1.0 uh, pen nib size, okay? Doesn't have to be that one, but I just I'm just telling you what I'm using. What it really comes down to is we just need we need equipment that works, right? Okay, now see how I'm putting some of this into the lit area, okay? Some people are a little bit intimidated with you know thinking about using this type of thing, but what I do, and I know what you're yeah, you know, I can understand it. But what I do is I add it to my light areas first, because you can barely see it in this light area, right? It's really invisible because it's white on white. And then as I come into my darker areas, I just kind of space out my dots a little bit more, okay? Like it dissipates, that lighting dissipates a little bit. But if you want to do a little patchy snow, you can put down here, like I'm doing like this. I don't know if you can see it here. Let me show you what I'm doing here. I'm kind of doing this. Little clumps of snow or something like that on the ground. And again, I'm kind of keeping it more in the light because snow wouldn't be reflective if it was in the shadows, right? That's it in theory, okay? You can put some snow, little patches, you know, or maybe it's, you know, maybe there was some snow and it's already melted off for the day, but maybe there's a little bit of snow here in the shadows, you know, on the grass, or it's kind of patchy. Like a little bit of texture on my scenes. Okay, see that down there on the road? Oh, there we go. <clears throat> okay. Let's throw some onto some of these branches right here. See, I'm kind of putting it on the branches that are closer to the light, even though that light is, you know, supposed to be in the deep background. It's probably miles away from this, but that's where the light is, so I'm going to put some of these reflections, or whatever it might be, ice, snow on these branches. Okay. There's a little bit of a lighter area back here. Is that little one? So see, that gives me an opportunity for some other types of effects. That's why I like to leave some areas a little bit lighter as well, okay? A little bit on the uh, crooked path as well. Now I'm going a little bit more extreme than I usually do because it's kind of an experiment. I just want to see how much, you know, if I can put kind of a little bit more 
uh, of this type of effect on these scenes without it make you know looking like I just went way overboard with it because I like the look on those black and white ones so. mountains in the background. So, I, guess look, I don't know. It looks okay, I guess. <laughs> okay, it it's beginning to look a lot like winter, we'll say. All right. We're at 31 minutes. Half an hour card. Quite a, a visual statement. If you're stamping with me, or doing some special effects with me with the gel pen. Hope you're enjoying it. I'm just cutting off a little base of here. Get that a little bit closer. I have the reed stamp here. Ooh. Let me try something here, okay? Um, let's do something here. Let's go with the color box frost white. If it gets dark enough here, we can do this. And I've probably done this on a video before. But let's stamp this out. <laughs> that ink pad is so blobby and I re-inked it. Okay, let me go with my less inked up one. I re-inked one of them. And the uh, it's so kind of... Uh, um, thick with ink. It's because the sponge is so old, it's starting to kind of uh, break down and it's real blobby, if that's a word. Alright. Let's see how this will look. My plans is not, or my plan is not to just only do this in white, but we'll see how it goes first. It's to kind of layer it, you know, maybe with some white impressions and some black impressions. Actually, that doesn't look too bad just in white. If you have a white pigment ink pad, or if you want to emboss these in white, you can do that too. You can also just stamp them in black, and that'll look great. Okay, have those in the foreground like so. All right, now here's what I'm going, I think I'm gonna have to do, because I already laid down a lot of that white gel pen work. So if I wanna stamp this, these reeds over the front of that gel pen work down there, I have a feeling I'm gonna have to go to Versafine. Um, this is someone's favorite color, uh, I mean, uh, of black. Someone said that in the chat, if you're watching this video here, the chat on the, uh, the live broadcast this last weekend. If you're watching this one, this impression's for you. Versafine is a beautiful, beautiful black ink. I don't always use it for my main images, though, because if I stamp that out in Versafine black where I am, it just would take a little bit longer to dry, okay? You can heat set it or something like that if you're in an area where it doesn't dry uh, very quickly, okay? But Versafine, I find it to be a fairly thick, not thick like a memento or something like that, but just very, very opaque and almost dimensional. It's, it's so dark 
and crisp. I love it for my foreground images though, where I don't have to stamp over anything over the top of it, or I'm not going to apply more color over it. Okay, it's just going to be a nice, stark, deep, rich impression, okay? In this case, not a super bold one, because I'm stamping reeds, and it's more spindly, you know, but this ink right here can stand up right over the top of all of that texture in there and uh, gel pen work. So we have a layered foreground using the VersaFine and Colorbox. Sometimes it gives a more interesting look to your foreground if you have multiple uh, tones in the foreground. I don't know if I would do white, you know, in a, a high noon scene or something like that, but this one's kind of supposed to be cool, wintry, crystalline maybe in uh, as far as the setting goes. So it fits in just, you know, just fine. Okay, now, mm, let's see, sometimes I like to go in and I'll bring in a little bit of continuity, maybe I'll add a few of these little highlights onto some of these reeds that I just stamped out so we have this little kind of dot effect on a, some of that imagery just as some of that imagery in the background has these little highlights, okay? Or textures, I should say. Thus, bringing continuity to the various um, areas of different depths throughout the scene. Okay, uh, oh, I know what I need to do. See this right here? Okay, we have that white pen in the background. Let's bring some of that into this chapel as well, okay? Maybe I'll do this column right here. I'll kind of bring it out from the, the background a little bit with a little bit of tone. Hit the stairs a little bit, a little bit of that porch. So I'm putting a little bit of this texture onto that chapel. And it gives a little bit of a textural um, variety, I guess. Certainly uh, with lighting as well, okay? All right, so we have that. Now do you want to try something really bold? We have this gel pen, and how about the first snow or something like that? So you're just bringing these little dots, you know, into open areas, but you're also running it over things, okay, over imagery. So don't be afraid to put it, you know, here's a dot right in my chapel, okay? This area like this. Now I would say it's really looking like snow. Or winter, I should say. When I put it on here, it's not to say that that little snow is on the chapel, it's in front of it, it's, it's closer to us, you know, and the chapel is in the background, okay? Even the foreground right here, I'm putting some snow in front of the foreground, in front of those reeds, okay? So see this? It's kind of a fun texture that you're just kind of introducing into the scene. It's almost like a new dimension. It's like this overlay of, uh, you know, this falling shape. OK, 
Okay. Now, if you want to, we can do something like let's keep let's do this little dot right there and let's say it represents something. Let's say it represents something like the North Star. Okay. For, for our Halloween holiday card. I have my cotton swab. And this paint color box gel uh, uh, pigment ink is very dry. Okay. So I'm just going to take that star. Okay. Or that dot, I should say, and I'm going to turn it into a nice, beautiful, glowing star. I don't have a ton of paint on here, you know, this pigment ink. So I have that little shape showing through, and it looks more like a little glow. Okay. Oops, sorry. So that star. Maybe the rest of it is snowflakes. All right, so how do your scenes look if you've stamped along with me? And how's your snow? How's your reeds and composition and lighting? Did you retain these areas of light in here? Okay, like in the chapel. Basically, what I have here, this, you know, when you look at this, we have a mountain, a chapel, a path, and some meadow, right? There's one, two, three, and I guess there's four, you know, four or five different areas. If you really want to break up the scene, I left a little bit of light in each one of these scenes, even if it's a very small amount, like that one right there. If it was colored in, it would be okay, but for me, I like a little bit of variation in each of the areas, okay? So you just kind of introduce a little bit of dark and light into each object, okay? That being said, there's no right and wrong in terms of your lighting. Just kind of keep it light somewhere, okay? Here's some different samples right here. You can see, you know, in each little background here, there's a little bit of light, a little bit of dark, a little bit of light, a little bit of dark. That little thin layer of sky right there, a little bit of light, a little bit of dark, okay? Right here we have this chapel again, kind of more of a, I don't know, whatever, dusk. See, oh, here, look at this one right here. That I did use the, uh, the white color box ink on that one. But again, see, even when I did it back then, a little bit of light, a little bit of dark, a little light. I didn't leave anything light over here, but hey, it's not bad. Sky, light, and dark. And this one right here, instead of it just being sky, we've introduced the mountain peaks in there, rocky peaks, light, and dark, okay? So, when you're doing it, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to kind of conceive of all of that way ahead of time, all right? Bring in your lighter tones, and then just when you get into your medium and darker tones, just don't go everywhere where you put that lightest color, in the different areas. You could go all the way to dark and all the way to black. And if you don't like some areas too light, um, if you've left some areas too light, if you think it's too light in the end, then just go back to your lighter tones and introduce some of those lighter tones into your areas that you've left the white of the paper, okay? So don't just try to do it with, you know, if I don't like that, oh, it's too light in there. Don't bring black in there, bring light blue or something like that, you know, into that area first and then build it up through your color scheme. And it's this one's simple, you know, it's basically four colors. I use, you know, the Marvy tones too, but, you know, light, medium, dark for the most part. Okay? All right, so one of the things that just takes these compositions from, you know, spring to uh, winter is just the absence of your warmer tone colors like you know these two right here yellows yellow greens greens and you just turn it into more of a, a cool colored spectrum or if you like 
If your favorite color is magenta, do a whole color scheme in magenta, you know. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. And if you're stamping along, uh, thank you for stamping along with me. And there is your relatively quick uh, winter scene. Could be your winter card. You know, I don't know if I'd want to do 30 of them, you know, identical or something like that. But it really doesn't take too much time, you know. And if you really want to expedite the entire process, if you know about brayering, when you're doing brayering, you're not really controlling light and shadow, but you can stamp this composition out over like a, a transition of, you know, light blue to dark blue up here and just stamp out your composition right over the top of it or stamp the composition first and just brayer right over it, you know, light to dark up here. That's what I would do. All right. Fun stuff and stamping.